Praise the Lord. There is rest. There is peace. There is hope. There is love in Jesus. And what a blessing it is to know him today. I want you to turn with me to a passage of scripture found in the Corinthian letter. 1 Corinthians. We're going to look together at chapter 12. And we'll be reading verse 12 through verse 26, but we'll be making reference to other verses that are in the chapter. Let's read together. If you'd like to stand for the reading of God's word, we encourage you to do so. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll begin reading at verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And the Greek demands a negative answer, no. If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Again, no. 
If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. You may be seated. The Board of CE, as an instrument of the church, has as a great concern the unity of the body of Christ, especially here at Rock Creek Church of God. They want us all to come to an understanding that every one of you are important to the body of Jesus Christ, the mystical body, Christ the head, and all those who've been born by the Spirit of God and added to the church of the living God, whether Baptist, Methodist, Church of God, doesn't matter, that we are members of one another and that each of us have an important function in the life of the church. So this morning we're going to look through these few verses and then I've asked my secretary, Teresa, to come. She has a handout that we want each of you during our time of invitation to fill out because we need this information for us to stay connected together and for us to realize how important each of the members of this body is. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer this morning. Father, how we thank you for the Rock Creek Church of God. How we thank you for their role in this community for over a hundred years. For the pastors who've come out of this church. Father, for the leaders in the business world that have come out of this church. The physicians, the nurses, the teachers. Father, the list goes on and on of people that have had tremendous influence in our society because of their relationship to you and as a result, their relationship to the body of Christ, the church. Lord, we want this effectiveness. We want this vibrancy. We want God, all of us, to live on the cutting edge so that we can be used, O Lord, of you for generations to come if Jesus tarries. So help us this morning to understand how important the unity of the body is, our connectivity with one another, and help us to realize how this unity is found in the life of the church. Bless us today, O oh God, with understanding as we look at the verses we've read for the next few moments that remain in our worship hour. Thank you. For your presence. Thank you for helping us to understand our connectivity. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I want to say by way of preface that there's a vast difference between union and unity or oneness that exists in the church. You see, union is achieved when a group of people are brought together to achieve a common purpose. All of you who have been involved in unions know that you come from different walks of life. 
Some may be Christian, some may not be Christian, but you have a common purpose. And you exist for the betterment of the workers that are involved in the union. How different from unity as expressed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Unity can only be achieved in a group of people by the Spirit of God. Think about that. Unity, connectivity in the body of Christ can only be achieved by the Holy Spirit as He works on each member's nature and each member's will in the group that they may achieve oneness of heart and mind working together in the kingdom of God. In other words, everyone that's truly a member of God's church, their natures have to be changed. We all born with a sinful nature, an Adamic nature. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But for the unity that Paul's expressing to the church at Corinth here in chapter 12, for it to be a reality in the life of the body of Christ, the church, our natures have to be changed. We have to be born again of the Spirit of God. Not only that, our wills have to be surrendered and submitted to the will of God. That, what, that is what makes the fellowship of the church so beautiful. Because in this fellowship, our natures have been transformed. In this fellowship, our wills have been submitted to the will of God. And so we work for each other's common good. <laughs> We're concerned about each member in the body of Christ. In fact... As your pastor, I believe that unity in any church is in direct proportion to the individual people's experience of the Holy Spirit. Unity in any church is in direct proportion to how we've allowed the Holy Spirit to change our sinful natures to the likeness of Christ. And our wills through the Holy Spirit have become submissive to him that we may be filled with his spirit. That our agenda might become his agenda. And when that happens in a local body, wow, what miracles can take place in the life of the church. Unity can never be humanly manufactured it's only received as we truly submit to God's Holy Spirit's working in our life. May I say that then and only then can there be one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Then and only then can we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. You won't find this in unions. You won't find it in club. But my friend, you'll find it in God's church. The unity of God's people. To help us understand this truth, look back to our scripture reading. Verse 12 says, talking about our physical body, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body. Paul said, just look at your body. There are many members. You have hands. You have feet. You have eyes. You have ears. You have a head. You have lungs in your body, heart in your body, intestinal organs in your body, various organs of different descriptions in your body. And God has placed these members in our body because the psalm says in our mother's womb we are wondrously and curiously wrought. It's the plan of God for our bodies to function as they function. And we need every member. 
Now it's true sometimes we lose a member. And we go through life maimed or handicapped. But the perfect scenario is when every member is functioning properly. Amen? The older we get, it slows down a little bit. <laughs> and your pastor can attest to that. But Paul is saying, look at your body, how it works together. And then he says... So is Christ. And he's referring to the mystical union described in Scripture between Christ and his body, the church. He said the church is the same way. It's the same way. When we're all working together, the function is perfect and beautiful. And God's work is being done in this present world. You say, Brother Absher, how does it happen? I understand the physical body and how all the organs have to work properly for everything to go right, but how does this work when many people are members of the body, Jesus Christ, the church of the living God? How does that happen? Well, he explains it in verse 13. Look there. He says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into what one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, another place, male or female. By one spirit. You say, what's he talking about? We'll turn back to Matthew chapter 3 just for a moment. And I want you to notice with me verse 11 and 12. Matthew 3, verse 11 and 12. John the Baptist has come and he's preaching in the wilderness. And many are coming to him for baptism and preparation for the coming Messiah. In verse 11 and 12, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, or the Greek preposition would be better translated on the basis of your repentance. We know that because he tells them when they come to him, they've got to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance before he'll baptize them. So he's saying, I indeed baptize you with water on the basis of your repentance. But notice what he says. He that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. That's why he says by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Upon our repentance. Our godly sorrow for sin. Our turning our back on the way we were living. To face God and to strive to live as God wants us to, to, to live. The Bible says we are born of the Holy Spirit because it goes on in this verse says to say all made to drink into one spirit look back to John chapter 3 and Jesus makes this clear to Nicodemus let's read verses 3 through 8 Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto Jesus, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, the physical birth, and of the spirit, the spiritual birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is every one that's born of the Spirit of God. There's a miracle that takes place when a person confesses that they're a sinner and repents of their sin and believes on the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross as the only thing that remedies their sin 
and they're born of the Spirit. And at that time, they're baptized or immersed into the body of Christ. They're made a member of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. It's a mystery. But it happens to every person who truly repents of sin and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. They're born of the Spirit of God. The body is not one member, but many. Take just a moment and look around the audience. Would you look around just a moment? Everybody, look at your neighbor. Look at people across the way. Look at your preacher. Because <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that God can take such variety of people, different sizes, different shapes, Different appearances, different backgrounds, and he places them in the church, the body of Christ, where he intends there to be unity, mutual love for one another, no big eyes and little U's. We're all equal in the sight of God. Praise God, amen? Aren't you glad to be a part of God's church? He says that the foot says, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Of course not. If the ear says, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it not of the body? Of course not. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it pleased him. We're a pleasure <laughs> in the sight of God. We please him. When we function where he has placed us in the body of Christ. Look over at verse 4 and following. We're all different. He's going to tell us that here. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. He says everyone has a function in the body of Christ, the church. Every one of us, whether it seems our part is small or large, we all have a part. And if we don't do our job, there's something like it. And the body can become sickly. And then he says, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. That's the ability to apply knowledge. To another, the word of knowledge, that's being able to understand the teachings of the word of God. To another, faith, and the faith mentioned here is talking about miraculous faith. Those who have the faith to move mountains. <laughs> Those who have the faith through the spirit of God, they believe that miracles can happen. To another, the gifts of healing. They believe that when they pray as we prayed here that healing is going to be imparted. I believe it every time we come to pray. To another, the working of miracles. They believe that there's nothing too hard for God that anything can be done through the Spirit of God working in people's lives. To another prophecy, the ability to preach or teach the word of God. To another, the discerning of spirits. My mother has a cunning gift that I'm glad I don't have, and that's the discerning of spirits. She's amazed me and my dad. 
She's met people in my church for the very first time and then told me, honey, all I'm going to say is be cautious, be in prayer. And later I'd find out how right she was. The discerning of spirits. The Holy Spirit only can impart that gift. Divers kinds of tongues. That's the ability to speak in languages. It's not a gibberish. It's the ability to speak in another's language. Either you've learned the languages or God gives you the ability to speak the language always for purposes of evangelization. Much like happened on the day of Pentecost. 17 different dialects and the Galileans who spoke the Galilean dialect, all of those there heard the message in their tongue and over 3,000 came to Christ. He says there are also the gift of interpretation of tongues. I was preaching in a revival meeting in Metropolis, Illinois, and a French lady couldn't speak a word of English, heard every word I spoke in her own language, and she was saved. God gave her the ability to understand English that she might be saved. All these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. God has set the members in the body as it pleased him. So we're not to be jealous of those who have gifts that appear to be greater than ours. We're not to covet them. And those who have greater gifts aren't to be prideful because anything that you have or are able to do is a gift of God. Amen? It's a gift of God. If they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I'm going to ask you to do something else right here. I want you to look to the person next to you or the person behind you, in front of you, and I want you to say to them right now out loud, I need you. Can you do that? <laughs> kind of give a little warm fuzzy, doesn't it? Now say to them, you need me. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I need you and you need me. And that's the truth of the oneness in Christ. That's the truth of the unity of the body. That's the truth of connectivity in Christ. We all need each other. He said, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. As people grow older in the church, young people, they're very important. Very important. The wisdom they have the lessons they've learned can be imparted to you. And young people are very important to the body of Christ. Their zeal, their energy, their vitality, their vision. So important. All members of the body are necessary. 
And we're not to live as separate entities, the youth and the older and the middle-aged and the babies, and they're all important. <laughs> and we're to treat each other with respect and honor. He says, for our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. He says, it doesn't matter how little, how little we're gifted. God says, I bestow more honor, and that member is just as important as the person who's been highly gifted. Paul said on in one occasion that sometimes when people come to the church, you seat the prominent person down front and make over him, and others can come in and you let them sit wherever they want. God says, everyone is important to me. Everyone. We reach our hands in fellowship to every blood-washed one, Amen. And to those who haven't yet been blood washed, we open the door and bid them come that they can experience the unity we've experienced through right relationship with God and one another. He said, this is true that there should be no schism or division in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another. We're to, just, we're to be just as concerned for the poor man as the rich man, the black man as the white man, and we could name all the different cultures and colors. All are important in the eyes of God. And I love this last verse. He said, whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. My friends, when unity comes, when our natures have been transformed into the image of Christ and our wills have been submitted to his will and we're walking in the fullness of his spirit, not seeking our own aspirations, not seeking our own agendas, but seeking God's agenda together. We'll care for each other. We'll help each other. We'll pray for each other. We'll do the very best at the gift we have and using it for the extension of the kingdom of God. Let's stand together for a moment of prayer and brother Wayne will lead us in a time of invitation if